Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. Recently, there has been a growth of interest in auction house trading and flipping, and the emergence of some interesting channels such as Magicus and Bregfords who deal with these concepts. What I'm going to share in this video is some powerful and advanced theories about making money from the auction house. And this is something I have several decades experience in. Not so much from Warcraft itself, but until I quit about a year ago, for most of my adult life, I made my living almost exclusively from professional gambling, cards and sports, etc. And I got to understand the behavior of markets pretty well. A lot of it was to do with finding exploits in online sports books and casinos. Uh, much as I do now with Warcraft. While these concepts are somewhat advanced, they are at their core quite simple, and I generally found out about them through the study of obscure academic books and journals, which were often written in a very impenetrable style. The language of investment is this weird kind of code and jargon where the writers seem to almost deliberately want to use the most pretentious words possible to describe everything. If I didn't know better, I'd assume they were trying to keep advanced and scientific investment strategies out of the hands of ordinary people. Uh, it, it wasn't that, though. It's just that academics are really up themselves. Note that I use words like gambling and betting interchangeably with words like investment, because for all practical purposes they're exactly the same thing. Now, to start with, let's cover a universal rule when it comes to any form of investment. You need an edge. In order to invest in anything, you should first be sure that the investment in question such as buying an item to resell on the auction house, has a, quote, positive mathematical expectation, end quotes. And all that means is that, on average, you should make more money than you lose. You need an edge. The simplest way to do this is to buy something below average market value, and you can check on this with something like the Undermine Journal website or various add-ons and then resell that same item at a higher value. Say, for example, I think that I can buy some item on the auction house for 10,000 gold, and then resell it for 20,000 and double my money. I calculate that 60% of the time, I'll get back double my investment, and 40% of the time, I'll fail to sell it and have to delete it to free up my backspace. Is it a good idea? Yes, and here's why. 60% of the time I gain 10,000 gold, and 40% of the time I lose 10,000 gold. Now, if you multiply 0.6, that's 60% chance of winning, by 10,000, you get 6,000. And then multiply 0.4, that's the 40% chance of winning, by 10,000, you get 4,000. Subtract the 4,000 from 6,000 and you get 2,000 gold, which is your expected profit. It's also 20% of your investment. Now, when you think about investing, it is better to think in probabilities, as I'm doing here, than absolutes. For example, there was a recent video by Bregvids where the title mentioned Tripling Your Gold. Now, much as I love Bregg's videos and I recommend you to subscribe to his channel, there's a ton of useful information there, that made me cringe. It's fine for a video title designed to draw people in, but it's really dangerous if you apply that logic to actual trade. In reality, there is almost always at least a small chance of losing your money, no matter how likely you might think it is that an item will go up in value. But provided you invest sensibly, then you will make money over time. To give you an example, over Christmas there were lots of people levelling up garrisons in Draenor to make as many alts as possible, 
to get a shot at the savage gifts on offer during the Christmas period. It was generally reckoned that the item Ogre Caches would rise in value as players desperately tried to get their garrisons ready on time. And for this they needed garrison resources, and the Ogre Caches provided just that. In previous years, the Ogre Caches rose considerably in value up to the Christmas period, and I bought quite a few of them to capitalise on this. It was a good plan. Uh, unfortunately, as the event arrived, people discovered that the Savage Gifts were no longer dropping the very valuable Elixir of the Rapid Mind, a change Blizzard had not announced. Consequently, many players didn't bother to level their garrisons at all, and the demand for the Ogre Caches fell. Now, this is fairly unusual. Mostly, if an item tends to increase in value over the course of the year, then it will do so most years. Most of the bigger traders use this strategy of buying seasonable items up and then reselling them later in the year very profitably. The point is not that you shouldn't invest, but that you shouldn't risk too much of your gold on any individual proposition. There is a simple formula to help you do this, and it's called the Kelly Criterion. The Kelly Criterion requires you to bet the same percentage of the total amount of gold you have relative to your advantage. So in the example we used earlier, where you have a 20% advantage, you could invest as much as 200,000 gold if you had a million gold available to use. Now this stuff is really important because if you invest less you are being too conservative and you won't make money fast enough. And if you invest more than Kelly, you stand a very good chance of losing everything. In fact, if you invest more than two times the number the Kelly formula recommends, you are almost certain to go broke. What this means is that Kelly will win money at the fastest possible rate. In the world of gambling and the world of finance, virtually everyone who gets rich used some form of Kelly or similar proportional betting system. And this is arguably the most important thing you will ever hear on any of my videos. Now this is a very crude version of the Kelly formula and it is important to understand why people don't generally invest to the amount that full Kelly would recommend. Instead serious investors generally invest a Kelly fraction usually between a quarter and a half. The first reason is that with auction house investing, it is rarely the case that you get a one-to-one -one payoff where you win or lose your investment, as in my simplified example. For more complicated scenarios, you divide the ratio of a profitable investment by a losing investment. So, for example, Say you want to resell an item you bought for 10,000 gold for 30,000 gold. If your investment is successful, you make a profit of 20,000, and if unsuccessful, you use 10,000. Divide 20,000 by 10,000, and you get 2. So, with a 20% advantage, you'd actually bet 20% divided by 2, that's the ratio we've just come up with, or 10% of your bankroll. Essentially, the higher the profit you are looking to make, the more risky your bet is, so you bet more conservatively with the same advantage. Another consideration is the fact that gold, or money in general, can't be divided infinitely. Another is that losing all your money in the real world has very serious consequences. Fortunately, that doesn't apply in Warcraft, where it is relatively easy to grind up more gold. A major problem for investors, and this includes auction house traders, is that they don't really know what their advantage is on any given investment, and have to guess, often on the basis of history and precedent. For this reason, it is best to be conservative. And finally, when you're making multiple trades at once on different items, it is possible to use up all your gold reserves and miss out on profitable opportunities. I'd recommend investing one half of the recommended Kelly number, though you may wish to go lower if you have high personal risk tolerance, 
and also if you have a large volume of trades on the auction house at any one time. There really isn't any need to be too precise about this, just remember the general principle that you should bet relative to the size of the total amount of gold you have, and in proportion to your advantage. If you want to learn more about the Kelly system, and it is really a fascinating subject, I'll link to more resources below. But as your fortune increases, so do your average profits from investment, till you could attain potentially millions of gold in a week or even a day, albeit in a very volatile manner. Aside from high level duping, this is the best way to make money in game. One of the most powerful techniques investors use is known as arbitrage and this is simply buying an item in one market and selling it in another for more, creating instant profit. The classic way to do this in Warcraft is to buy an underpriced pet on the auction house and then it is accessible to all characters on your account including those on other realms. So log in on a character on a low population realm and preferably one with none of that pet type available for sale, and post it for a much higher price. This has been a very good way to make gold, which many players have been using for many years. Um, Bregvids recently came up with a video on the subject, which I'll link to below. The conditions for arbitrage to occur are pretty unique, since most items cannot be traded cross-realm. Sometimes opportunities can occur within a single realm. For example, if you watch my recent top 5 gold farming exploits video, there's a situation which occurs where dinosaur bones from the Isle of Giants can be bought off the auction house and turned into spirits of harmony from a quest giver, which can result in instant profit if the prices for both items are out of line. Similarly, the price of alchemical catalysts from the Draenor garrison can be lower than the vendor price of the items they can be turned into, again creating instant profit. There's a very advanced arbitrage concept which will give you an edge over even the most sophisticated auction house traders, but it is a very difficult technique to master. Indeed, this technique is so strong that even many high-level investors in the real world don't really understand it. To illustrate how it works, imagine an island economy with just two businesses. One is an ice cream van, and the other is a shop that sells umbrellas. When it rains, umbrellas sell fast and make money, but the ice cream doesn't sell and the van owner loses money. When the sun shines, the umbrellas don't sell, but the ice cream van is printing money. Both the ice cream van and the umbrella shop are profitable overall and would like to expand. But each owner is worried about borrowing money to do so, as they fear a long period of bad or good weather would mean they couldn't repay the loan. The solution, of course, is for the van owner and the umbrella shop to share profits and losses. That way, they both make a consistent, riskless profit, whatever the weather, and can afford to get loans and open new outlets. And they both make a ton of extra money. The same basic concept applies to auction house trading. If you can buy an item or items which tend to rise in value when another item falls in value, then the risk in both items cancels out. The technical term for this is covariance, and I'll link to a more technical explanation below. This is an incredibly profitable strategy when you can pull it off, as unlike most forms of arbitrage, you won't get people moving into the market and wiping out the value. But you need a situation where you have two items that are both by themselves good investments, and also where the value rises or falls in direct opposition to each other. This type of situation isn't easy to find. Let's go back to the Ogre Cache example. You may remember that before Christmas, many people brought up Ogre Caches, which help level your drain or garrison, as a level 3 garrison allowed you to participate in quests over Christmas, which awarded the Savage Gift. 
that itself awarded a selection of very valuable items, including the elixir of the rapid mind. The idea was that as Christmas came around, people would be struggling to level garrisons and would pay any price for the ogre caches, so they could get as many savage gifts as possible. Now, as it turned out, the caches didn't sell that well because Blizzard removed the elixirs from the savage gifts. However, if you were really smart, you would have noticed that Blizzard had been slowly removing experience potions from the game and that they might well remove them from the savage gifts. Without being an insider at Blizzard, you couldn't have actually known that 100%, but you could have been aware of it as a possibility. How would you use that information? Well, if you bought Elixirs, then you covered yourself really well. You see, if Blizzard do nothing, then you can sell the caches at a nice profit. Plus, you can sell back the Elixirs for the price you got them. If Blizzard removed the Elixirs from the Savage Gifts, as they in fact did, then you will likely lose money on the Ogre Caches, but you will make a huge profit on the Elixirs, as they rise in price. And in fact, the Elixirs did rise in price, almost doubling in value. Recognising such opportunities isn't easy, but if you can master this mindset, you can beat not just the WoW Auction House, but master almost literally any type of trading in the real or virtual world. The timer on this video is coming up to 17 minutes, so I'm going to leave a lot of stuff unsaid. I was going to cover things like random walk theory, the correctional behaviour of the markets, and market psychology. All of which can give you a real edge with auction house trading. I'll link to some resources covering those subjects below. In this video, unlike much of my content, I haven't discussed exploits which allow you to take advantage of the WoW economy, which is something you may wish to subscribe for in future. And if you really want to know everything about manipulating the WoW economy, you may wish to sign up to my Patreon feed, where I work almost literally 24-7 to find all kinds of exploits for Patreons and post them the second I find them. But if you can't afford it or you just don't want to sign up, be assured that I'm committed to providing the most unique and valuable content on this channel for free for the foreseeable future. Thank you for watching. This has been Archvelder.